Okay, this week's health tip, we're going to do, be talking about a really important topic and some very new, latest research on uh, heart attacks. So, <clears throat> conventional wisdom with the heart attacks is, um, you know, the mainstream thought process is that people, you know, eating a lot of bad food, bad diet, that kind of stuff will eventually cause a clog in one of the arteries that feeds the heart. So normally the heart really doesn't look like a Valentine's heart, but I just drew it that way for simplicity. So the heart's, you know, pumping blood out into the body, but every time the, the, the squish stops, the blood that was coming out comes back and it actually opens up these little valves to feed blood to the heart itself because the, the heart is a muscle and it needs blood and oxygen and everything else. But the idea is most people think that, you know, uh, a clot is going to form somewhere in this, the, the artery coming to the heart and it's going to block right there and then all of that part of the heart would die. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is, what they've been finding is they've been doing these uh, blood flow studies on the heart recently, and they've actually found that even though they found a clot at a certain spot in the heart, there was actually normal blood flow after that clot. So what, what, they're, what they're finding is that the blood or the heart has all these, what they call like collateral circulation, collateral vessels, and that just means that there's other vessels taking the place and kind of filling in spaces that aren't directly fed by this one thing. And there's a really ex there's a large percentage of the population that actually have heart attacks with normal cholesterol levels and normal blood pressure and all that stuff. And so they're thinking, well, why does this actually happen? <clears throat> so one of the thought processes is, is that um, there's a balance in your body between the, there's an uh, a nervous system in your body. We don't call it the voluntary one that you control, but the one that's automatic. We call it the autonomic nerve system. And there's basically two sides of that. There's the, we call it the sympathetic, which would be your gas pedal, and the parasympathetic, which would be your brake. And what they're finding is people who have chronic stress in their lives, they don't necessarily have high cholesterol levels or anything like that, or big fatty arteries and things like that. But the parasympathetic, which would be the one that would be relaxing heart vessels and vessels in the body kind of in a relaxed state, that system starts to fatigue out and what happens is people start to get the gas pedal going all the time and the gas pedal makes the, the heart work harder and harder and harder and I, I just kind of the um, the metaphor I kind of use for it, if you just think about this as sort of like your uh, the engine for your car right so if your car is at, at a stop and you don't have your foot on the gas or on the brake you're just idling if you're idling properly then you'll have a good balance in your autonomic nerve system but if you're the kind of person that always has your foot on the gas, your, your car is actually going to be idling over to one side. So it's actually going to be burning out the motor. And eventually what's going to happen is you might actually seize the motor, which would be seizing the heart, all that contraction. And there'd be like a massive sort of reaction inside the body, lots of contraction, lots of pain and everything, because the heart is actually freezing, basically. If you can think about it, see, like the engine actually seizing because there wasn't a brake the brake pedal couldn't be applied anymore, it just went all on the gas and then the engine just just burned out basically. So <clears throat> the testing that we do in our office, there's actually a specific stress test. It's you put your hand in a, in a little machine and it uh, does this reading and it's called heart rate variability. And people who have better heart rate variability, meaning the beats between their, each beat of their heart is, um, it's not like a, like a metronome, it's not very mechanical, it has a lot of variations up and down and flexibility speeding up and slowing down. That's a person who has a lot of flexibility in their system that can handle new stresses. But somebody has very low heart rate variability, <clears throat> one little stress could be putting them much towards this. So we actually know there's a number of studies that actually show that when people get chiropractic care, and we've seen it you know, hundreds of times in our offices when people are never, haven't been in care before, we check them at the beginning of care and then we do a series of 12, 15 visits or during the regular care, we check them again, their heart rate variability profile actually improves. They get better balance and they get more reserves. So hypothetically, you know, I don't have the studies to prove it yet, but maybe we're preventing heart attacks of this type. This, this overwhelmed sympathetic action. So we've always been saying that chiropractic really is a, a thing for your wellness and your lifestyle and there's more and more research and more studies coming out looking at that perspective. Not like chiropractic is going to make your neck pain go away in five visits or your back, make your back pain go away, but it has an impact on your body's health. Your health, your children's health, your family health. So that's your health tip for the week. Hopefully that was something you found interesting and once again, please share the video with everyone you can and like it and spread the news. Thanks.